It's always backwards. Oh well. Close enough. All right. <clears throat> so maybe we can start with a quick introduction, yeah. introduce okay. ourselves and yeah, so hello everyone, uh, thanks for coming here. I'm Manish, I work as a software engineer um, for Stephanie Inc. And uh, my project is Caterpillar Autonomous Trucks. I work as a path planning software engineer there. Uh, so I have some experience uh, writing codes for autonomous trucks that are already in production. Uh, my main platform is not ROS, but we work on a platform that is very similar to ROS. But that's sort of an industry equivalent of ROS. So ROS is not something that you should be using. Uh, but there are like alternatives that, uh, that most of the industry. So uh, um, regarding me and why I'm here right now, means I, I, I was searching like I'm not new to like Detroit area, but uh, I was just trying to get along with like new people around here. So I, I, I read about this meetup and I met Alex. And the rest of the team here actually, and they they are really helped, and uh, somehow they have motivated me. Uh, like I was very quick in building this robot. That I was kind of procrastinating for a very long time, so I thought, okay, I should share this thing. That um, so so this will be very informal. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Since I am not assuming much, like any Ross knowledge, as, as at least. Um, even if uh, if you understand basic programming, like, uh, then you should be good to go. My main programming language is C++ because that's what I use. So I'll be using that, but I'll be I'll be hopefully able to make you guys understand what like that uh, piece of code might mean if you even know like any other programming language. That's why like, if you are good with Python, then then also you should be able to understand that piece of code. So uh, like if, if I'll be uh, looking into that, right? So uh, yeah, so let's just start with like a quick demonstration that what I made very like quickly just because I was using ROS. Maybe we can also introduce ourselves. Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, Maurice, you want to start? Oh, I, so yes. in order. I'm, I'm Maurice. Um, my name. <laughs> yeah, like maybe your name and why you're interested in ROS. Oh okay. Ah uh, yeah. So I'm um, I'm Maurice and I. I have my own little robotics yeah. platform and I'm yeah. trying to do lots of different things with it. So I'm um, looking to, I've heard about it before when it came out, but I've never actually like used it for anything. Uh, so yeah, I'm just learning how to maybe use it in my projects. Um, I probably won't run on my Raspberry Pi, but I'll do Yeah, this can, uh, you, you can actually make it work on Pi. So, okay, so I'll see, that's maybe what I'm working with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adesh Shua, and I'm from Pittsburgh. Well, I'm from Detroit, but I live in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and I'm a program manager at Assemble, which is like an after school program place. And one of the things that we do there are like um, teach kids how to program robots. So that's why I'm interested. Cool. That's why you saw me. Welcome to I3. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yogi, and uh, I'm here with Manish. And maybe I just finished right now. All right, <laughs> that works. <laughs> that, that's my introduction. So I, uh, I think we both worked on this robot. Uh, when was it? Uh, the saving system, like four, two, four months back, we tried to assemble it from the from the, the ground yeah. up. The hardware, yeah. And when I like moved to this place, then we started working on the steering system. Okay. So I uh, hopefully that will be integrated with it soon. <laughs> hey, I'm Sachin. Uh, just like you mentioned, you know, I was like uh, very interested in you know starting off with robotics. I did some small scale robotics back in my undergrad, but after coming here, like after start working, you know, there was a huge gap. I never went back into it, but looking at Alex and the I3, you know, it gave me a boost, and again, I started, uh, you know, getting back into the group. And uh, ROS is the way to go for uh, you know if you want to do something good in robotics. Um, that's why I'm really interested in ROS. Well, my name is Veronica, and I am interested in the real time operating system because this is part of my passion. So I love the process. Short and sweet. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I am Alex Polanski, and uh, I build these things, and I don't know Ross. I've never actually like coded anything in Ross, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. <laughs> oh, I've maybe a couple of characters here. I click some buttons. <laughs> Nami? No. <laughs> I was just kidding. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Nami helps out with the group and she learns yeah, <laughs> by, by trial. Yeah, yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, my name's Kurt. I've been like a hobbyist my whole life, but now I'm going to go to school and uh, do things for real this time. Oh, I, got a, I bought a nano, so. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do something with that. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, um, let, let me sh let me tell you like what this piece of like machine is right here. So, so I'm using this Jackson DX2 board. It's it's like any other like laptop. You uh, just like a embedded version of it, so that you can put it on robots. You don't want to put like a large laptop on top of it. So it can do almost same kind of same level of uh, processing like uh, on this like a smaller board. And then I have a couple of robotic servo motors, um, uh, a lidar that I haven't yet interfaced. Um, I haven't. I have interfaced, but I, I'll not be demonstrating it. Like I, I have a program that can show like the lidar map of this room, but uh, that's not part of the main program. And then I have an Arduino. Uh, I'm using Arduino to to actually have like lower level interface with the motors. I don't want my costly $300 board <laughs> to directly interface with like high current uh, motors so that I don't want this device to be damaged in any way. So Arduino is the way to go. It's very robust uh, system. Like if you provide it back current, it, it can withstand like uh, quite a decent amount of stupidity. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm using Arduino to interface with motors. And my main board is actually command, like sending command to Arduino. So it's like, so I'm putting like a like uh, intermediate layer, so that like my main board is not get not in danger, danger of like any high current uh, or EMF. Uh, and then I have two LiPo batteries. Um, one of them is completely discharged. That's why I have another one. Uh, the idea behind two LiPo batteries was again, uh, I wanted to power this board separately. Because if I'm maybe uh, uh, all of a sudden, if I get jerk or any high talk requirement, then there will be a current surge that I don't want to again interface or like uh, that I don't want any current surge to uh, reach my main board. That's why I have like separate power supply, I'm just uh, connecting the ground there. And that's it, like a very simple machine. Then uh, this is uh, Xbox C60. Uh, and uh, what, I, uh, what I have done is like I'm uh, I have interfaced this uh, board. Not all of those uh, uh, command buttons are like of importance right now. I, I've just given like okay, I can move it forward, reverse, and then I can give some direction. Like so, this pretty simple uh, logic right there. Um, when I'm like increasing it to forward, I'm providing maximum front commands there. Uh, I'll, I'll be showing you the codes and in a while I'm just showing you what I've done and uh, what ROS can help you do very quickly. Uh, right? Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's the demonstration. I'm switching off the power supply. Okay. Or, yeah, that's fine. It can stay on. One quick uh, question before mm -hmm. Why did you install ROS in Arduino port or in your? So, uh, yeah. So, ROS is installed in my main board. And I don't think it's if ROS can be installed in uh, Arduino machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you need at least uh, yeah, but, yeah. a board. That's fine. Right. Need to that's very far. So Pi can like at least Pi for can take care of uh, that kind of complexity. Uh, you need like an underlying uh, Ubuntu yeah. layer yeah. Um, on which you can install ROS. Some of it. That's right. Any other questions? Like any, so the Arduino board is like the motor driver for your. You can have a separate motor driver. Oh, so these are robotic servos. So the motor driver is within the uh, within these servos. 
and these souls have their own community protocol. Okay. So there is a specific pattern of message that I need to send, like okay, starting message, then okay, what I want to control is speed, position, and then whatever is the command. So there is a very specific communication protocol associated with this. Uh, okay. So uh, motor, right? so the order handles all that. Uh, uh, yeah. So Arduino handles uh, sending that mess message, yes. like yeah. And the, the motor driver, the physical motor driver, is within the motor. Okay. Right. What is the communication protocol? Uh, it's it's like uh, specific to this motor. So uh, and yeah, if you think like this is uh, using serial communication, like if you want to know what. So this is serial serial communication. Just but if you talk of what is the sequence of message like that, okay. then that's. Specific to this model, and okay. yeah, the data shape provides that awesome, right? So that's there. Uh, so let's just start with like some basic lingo associated with ROS. Um, okay, yeah, I think okay. So this right right here is the uh, actual node diagram of this particular ROS that is working. So okay, so serial node here is the Arduino. Okay, so how, how ROS works is it's an accumulation of nodes uh, publishing on some channels. Like I'll be explaining every term again, <laughs> so, but but I'm trying to uh, relate this robot to this diagram right now because that might be able to help us yes. understand. So so uh, in any complex robotic systems, uh, it is always uh, easier. To just distribute the task so that like each individual task have to do very simple or uh, have a very simple objective to satisfy. That way you can uh, understand the whole system well, right? So ROS actually provides that interface. It's not an operating system, it's just a distributed system library. So it makes uh, this task of distributing like so this simple machine I can program it as a single node, reading every sensor running a single large algorithm to process that and like so I can, I can do that in a single function but uh, the best way to do is uh, these things is to distribute them in different, uh, different nodes so that um, and especially in bigger teams you have different people working on different ones so, so okay so so what looking at this diagram so we have multiple nodes these circles are nodes and they communicate via something called a stopper. So these lines also have name, right? So you can see. And anyone can subscribe to any topic or any known this. This is, I think, a little bit off what I want to say. OK, let, let's go to the PPD, I think. Yeah. That's where I might be. One quick question. Mm -hmm. The connection between the turtle and the teleoperation or teleoperate, is that connection a serial protocol, or what is? Uh, that, that's yeah. Uh, so, so this is written on top of like UDP layers, but like uh, Ross abstract that information from us, so we need not to worry about like what protocol that is. So that is what Ross is for. So we uh, we need not to bother at all like what they're using under uh, under the hood, right? So uh, so, but uh, like if if you really want to look into the layer, that, that's UDP. Uh, communication protocol that's uh, that's used in like in software industry very widely and uh, pretty robust thing. Uh, so so this is written on top of UDP. It's not serial because this is this channel is communication between two processes within a computer. So a computer when when my laptop is running, there are multiple processes that are running there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I can run like Chrome there. I can mm -hmm. run Word. Right, parallel, and these are two different processes. There is no nothing like a serial communication happening there. They have like uh, other kind of communication protocols. So UDP is one. So any question regarding so this this whole block diagram that you have here is it like the high level? You can call it the block diagram for the whole system. Yep, right now, what I'm running in, like, if I'm doing this, like, like. So this is like what is happening right now. Okay. Who is who in the picture? Yeah. The so who is the turtle? Uh, so simulation is. Uh, yeah, I was like I can show. Yeah. So simulation is. Uh, uh, I think yeah. 
So there, so sim is this. Uh, so you can see the simulation right there. Okay, so that's sim. Sim node, so it is, it is all right. And then I'm, I'm sending uh, the same message to like serial node. Okay, so serial node is uh, the Arduino. Okay. And Arduino is communicating via something that is not here because this is this is showing what is running on the main board. This is ROS interface. Then this serial is actually uh, at Arduino, and Arduino is sending its message to the final motors. And uh, and teleoff is uh, is the main program that that I'm running. So that's uh, that's what it is. Right now. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll be explaining. I think a little bit more, and once we have. Yeah. And please feel free to you know ask as many questions because uh, I want this thing to be as interactive as possible. So um, and also Victor joined. Victor's. Uh, I, I don't want to over speak on how much experience you have on uh -huh. RAS. I would call you pretty well versed in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Victor, how uh, much? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I guess it depends. I, I, I just I've, I've used it for things, but um, um, I just I just came to hang out. So okay. <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, Alex, where? <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe you could. And maybe I'll learn a thing or two. And maybe you can yeah. also add anything. I, I, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I would add, like. <laughs> yeah. So where's the sharing again? Like of costing? Okay. Yeah. A bit of cost. cost. You see gas from oh no! Okay. You have to like choose the drop down at the bottom. Yeah, that's in the Chrome browser. To yeah, it's on the Chrome browser. It's like the three ellipses yeah. on the right. Right. So I have oh yeah, I haven't placed a lot of information on the side. Um, uh, so then, this is it. Okay, so uh, that's the whole workshop is about introduction to raw products, and these are the topics that we'll be covering. This is not like everything that we have in ROS, but like this is like the eighty percent of the time you will be like good to go with these things. Like so, ROS topics. ROS. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be starting with what is ROS. I think that's uh, so that like we know what ROS is used for. Then uh, some important ROS components. ROS topics is the ROS channel that I was talking about. Services, actions, and then I'll. I'll try to show you like a hands-on program, like in which we'll make a ROS node, make another ROS node, yeah. and oh, then there's nothing to follow. We'll try to find the between them. So that, <laughs> that that is just a basic complex. Right. Right. You can like, make it as complex as possible, and then you have a full test of course. Okay. So uh, so I think a couple of things. So ROS is not an operating system. I hope uh, a lot of you already know that, but that was my notion when I was not working on ROS. It's not an operating system, it's just a library. And I like to call it as a library that is just providing us distributed functionalities. Right? And it is just making us capable, uh, making our life easier in, in writing code that is more distributed in nature. And if you look at any complex machine, the robot is one of them, in which uh, we can think of any machine has multiple like nodes talking to each other, where each node have uh, have their own tasks. Like uh, so, I'm from autonomous uh, like car, like autonomous vehicles background. So think of like an autonomous car, and then every sensor is a node in itself. So what is the task? What is the purpose of that node? Uh, suppose what is lidar node there? Does anyone like if lidar is a node, then what is it doing? It's and then 
mapping and map, map of the whole thing. Um, uh, and then it's transferring that on a channel, so, right? So there are two things. It's processing something, and then it's sending that information to a channel, like, right? So every node have only like three tasks, like of all the possible things that they can do. They can listen to someone, they can like speak to some other node, and they have their own processing that they do on the data that they are listening on, right? So, yeah. so every node, like that's what every ROS node is doing. And then there, there's the other thing that every ROS node need not to do all those three tasks. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a node that is not publishing anything. It's like a node in itself that is maybe logging and lo like saving a file somewhere. Or they, they may be a node that is not listening to anyone else. They just have a task of its own. They have all the information that they need inside. And they are not, they're like just publishing. Maybe a, a, a clock. Suppose, uh, suppose you have a task named clock. It is just counting at some specific rate and just publishing the current time. Uh, they, they, they can be like complexity uh, <laughs> to, to some number and then publish. So, so these are the three tasks that any node can do, right? Um, so regarding ROS, what is ROS? ROS is simply a, a library that provides us distributed functionalities. Like that makes our life in uh, environment. Okay. Yeah. So coming to ROS node, I already mentioned that what ROS node is. It's a single executable program. So when you uh, when our operating system is running, we can actually look at the number of processes that we are running. Like if you are running Windows, do a control and delete, and you'll see all the tasks that are running. Right? So, and what ROS node is, it's a single process, like single task that you can spawn. Okay? And then what, what is the purpose of each node? It will be listening to something. We'll, we'll talk like what it will listen to, like then it will do some own processing, and then it will uh, speak out, like or like publish to some other node. Like okay, so think of it as like okay, uh, I'm writing like an uh, intelligent driver software. Now I'll listen to all the sensors. I'll listen to lidar. I'll okay, and then I'll I'll, I'll write the steering commands so that my my vehicle can drive. On. Like so, very simple, and like a lot of things happen, but yeah. So coming to like uh, so so ROS as such uh, yeah so ROS nodes I've already covered ROS code yeah so any distributed system like requires some kind of handling of uh, uh, how, how will you know that there is some other task that is running somewhere so you need to have some kind of master or slave architecture sort of thing or you you need to have some kind of architecture in which other nodes will know that other nodes exist uh, it's, uh, if you're not able to get this point right now that's fine but like uh, maybe 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 we'll, maybe we'll do like uh, answer this in term of like, like if you have any specific question then i'll be able to answer or, or like when we'll see like why is that important uh, uh, yeah, so so main is one of them, but in in ROS, uh, ROS node, every ROS node have their own main. But like so, suppose there are, there are two programs running, how will one program know that there is another program? Running? That's why you need to have some master. Every node when it comes up, it reports that okay, I am up to that master, and master will like write it down. Okay, this node node name, this is like up. And next time a node will come up, any other node, it will inform okay, this node is already up. So that's that's how these two nodes are able to communicate with their own. Um, I, I don't want to go with that, maybe uh, that side of it, but I hope uh, I, I'll be able to I think explain a little bit more once you'll have like the bigger picture of what how things are happening. Oh yeah. Uh, so I, I think this diagram depicts. I, mean, I copied it from like a Google <laughs> uh, image, but uh, let's see like how things normally work. We have a ROS master, 
Now, the task of ROS Master is to, it's kind of, it keeps the catalog of all the things that are running. Why do you need a catalog? Because uh, every new node, when it will come up, if it doesn't know which node is up, uh, then it will not be able to communicate to that node. Like, so this node, uh, so you can think of uh, ROS uh, Master as uh, maybe, uh, like USPS keeps address of like, or like a general phone catalog, right? If you want to search some friend and talk to him, you will like to go and search, uh, like search that catalog. So if you have that catalog, then you will be able to talk to any friend that you want. Right? So you need to have that catalog, the catalog is maintained by Ross Master, right? So every time a node goes, uh, comes up or goes down, Ross Master is updated with that. Okay, then once a node is up, there, there, there are some communications, there's some initial information transfer that happened that, so this node gets to know about like other nodes that are present. Once that communication is established, they talk to each other on a direct line. They need not to go to like the central person who told that that node is up. They can talk to each other directly on something called this topic. So we have learned like, I think three terms so far. Uh, master, ROS master, node, and a top. Okay, so just these are the three terms that I have introduced so far. Okay, so can, I can you repeat topic again? What is topic? Yeah, so topic is the name of the channel that we are publishing on. And uh, the good thing about ROS is that this node is not directly talking to to any other node. It is simply publishing on some particular channel. So this is like um, uh, I can say like multi-input, multi-output communication. So anyone who will pick the phone, like it's the common line, anyone who will pick this channel will be able to read it. It's, it's not like a hidden communication happening there. So, and any node can publish on, on that channel too, right? So I can have like 10 nodes publishing some information on the same channel. And anyone who wants to listen, they will just subscribe to the same channel. So topic is just name of the channel uh, on that kind of abstract. Uh, yeah, that, that abstract the channel that we are uh, using to, sub, to talk to each other. Okay. So yeah, Mr. the formal definition is topics are name versus notes exchange messages. And that's, uh, yeah, I missed this already there, but uh, just remember the main gist of it. That's anyone can publish on any topic and anyone can publish and subscribe from any topic that they want. Like that's, in my knowledge, there is nothing like hidden in ROS like so far. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so topic is like, so topic have like an under, under every topic have an underlying structure. If this topic is for LIDAR data, then only LIDAR information can be published on that channel. You cannot publish the camera information because the, the uh, message type, like if, if you have, think, think of it in terms of programming, if there is a variable type, like if it is integer, then integer cannot hold the name of any other person. So similarly, any topic, can only hold a particular type associated with that topic. So, uh, any question like so far? Like, any? <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I think the only thing is that the two you said two nodes, right? Maybe we can call it like node A and node B. Yes. Just to make sure that. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are different nodes, of course. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so what is ROS message again? So I have uh, like introduced four terms so far, ROS node, ROS topic, ROS master, and ROS message. What is ROS message? ROS message is the associated type of a ROS topic. And then there was uh, advertising and... Uh, subscribing and yeah, um, call back if you, if you say about... Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's like a general, I think. Uh, that's not a ROS term, that's a general like, communication term, right? Okay, so I, I'm not well, introducing questions. Yeah, sure. Um, 
I'm just curious, what, when was an example of a, of a time where you use multiple uh, nodes published into the same topic? So, because uh, I don't think I've done that before, but I'm just curious if you. Um, let me, let me, let me think. Yeah. Or if you want to get back to it later, you can. I'm just um, curious because I, I, I've never had a reason to do it, but. Yeah, yeah I, must, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, must, uh, even I cannot think of like a case right now, but uh, maybe a redundant system will be able, will be doing it. Like, okay. uh, you want some kind of extra safety that. Two sensors or two are or something, uh, or, or I guess they might be published in different ones. But okay, yeah, okay. I, but yeah, but, but that's completely possible. The yeah. thing is, this, okay. right? Yeah. Um, no one yeah. is like, holding like Ross is providing that functionality. Yeah. Uh, maybe for Victor, uh, can give him a quick idea of your background. So he works, Manish works on like what are the only trucks that's out there? Uh -huh. Yeah, I work for like Caterpillar or Thomas trucks. Oh, okay. Like, as a path planning software engineer. Okay. Right. So. So like we we have multiple sensors doing the same function on mm -hmm. on on a car. Would they all be using the same topic to communicate to among between themselves? No, because no. they're different. Yeah. So suppose there is like one sensor is camera, one sensor is lidar. No, like I'm saying I'm talking about two similar kind of sensors. Yeah, like two right They need not be. They need not be. But they can. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Right? So suppose there is LiDAR A, LiDAR B, one is on the left, one is on the right, they should not be publishing on the same topic. They should have a way to distinct. So I, I don't think in that case you will be doing that. Mm -hmm. But there, so Ross provides that capability. I, I cannot think of like uh, an instance in which, I, I at least know where places where multiple people listen to someone. Yeah, I, I don't know if we, like, if your message will be very useful if everyone is talking at the same time. So that, but that is a functionality that we have on our phone lines. So if we are on a conference call, like, uh, like multiple people can speak at the same time. No one is uh, stopping them from doing that. So uh, maybe I can ask this question later. Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead. Like, no, no. I'm just thinking about like if we have two sensors, like, and you do sensor fusion to create the whole mm -hmm. idea of the sound. Like, the master does that, the whole thing. And so uh, all data goes to master and master. Uh, so the architecture will look like this. So Ross, we don't ask Ross master to do any other processing, but just catalog management. Okay. So it is just for catalog. And then there will be like two nodes uh, sending some sensor data, and then there will be third node. Okay. But that will be happening. Everything will be happening at the node level. Okay. Um, master in Ross. Uh, is only used for catalog, only. and that is something that is not part of normally the industrial software that we use. That we use like different protocols. Uh, because, okay, so so you can think of it this way. This is a very fragile system because if master fails, everyone fails. Because master is a key component, and in any uh, in any like critical system, like life critical, safety critical system, you don't want things to be dependent on like a single process. That's why you have other kind of architectures, but ROS is this. Okay. Yeah, so, oh, I also already mentioned message. So message is the type associated with a, uh, with a topic, as we have a type associated with a variable, like in teaser. So in teaser can only uh, save numbers. Similarly, ROS topic. I can say ROS topic, this ROS topic should only publish um, time. So it will not be able to publish LiDAR data. So it will publish like hour, minutes, and like second. So every topic have an associated time. That is what message is. Uh, services I'm not covering, but uh, and practice, yeah. OK, that's fine. So these topics I'm not covering, but uh, let's go to uh, um, a simple, I think, Ross program and demonstration of, of like how you can do a couple of things. So, okay. So I'm like closing everything and just trying to bring up like. 
Okay, so uh, so nothing was working. I uh, and uh, the first command that I've run is like import ROS. Let me. So what import ROS is doing is so this is a bash command that I have just attached. It is including the path associated with my ROS library to my normal like terminal. So now all the ROS libraries are are accessible from this terminal. Okay. Now I'll the first thing that We'll do is like what? What is the first thing that we should bring up when we are running was? It's a master, right? So, yeah, cat, the catalog manager, right? So, and how how we do that is ROS code. So the master is up. So ROS code is a ROS command, and now the master is up. Let me show you like how I I, I if you guys remember I showed you uh, an initial diagram associated with this robot. Now let me show you what that diagram looks like right now. Um, so in every terminal, I'll be running import ROS at least because I want the terminal to have access to ROS libraries. That's how I've set this thing up. But yeah. So import ROS is not a standard command. It's just it is just adding uh, the ROS library to my current path. Can you show what's inside that? Uh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, so this is simply like sourcing my my rows or my ROS uh, bash in my current terminal. Nice. So, so you wrote this? Oh, uh, this this bash is yeah. This command is mine. Like I use a lot of the shortcuts you can see. You created the file with all these aliases. Ye yeah. So you all you already have bash RC, but then I have created all those like aliases just to make my life simple. The one that I use very frequently, I don't want to every time write source, opt, ROS, kinetic, set a bash. So what is this file called? This is bash RC. Oh. And this is associated with your terminal. Every time a terminal comes up, it comes up with this configuration. Uh, now, all of these commands are like my own, like LAS, LES, at least the LES ones. So some of them were already there. Um, yes. Even when you install softwares, Right, like when you will install an anaconda or stuff, it will include a lot of these commands. Like while installation, it will ask you if you want to import, like if you want to include this in bash RC. If you press yes, it will include one line that will include that uh, that will give you uh, like that software capability in your terminal. But you can do that by yourself. So this is not specific to your uh, ROS. It's like your generic. Uh, this is um, yeah. So this whole file Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I got like maybe the I have written all the alias ones and the export ones, but the top ones were already there. So you all, you all will have a bash rc command when you install uh, like uh, Ubuntu. Okay. And it's in your home folder. It's a hidden file, so that's dot bash rc if you look at the top. So, so all the hidden files start with uh, like a single dot and Ubuntu. Right, so so not something to worry about. It's, it's just that I'm I'm including some path because I think that's something common to every software that we run. Right, so so I've already imported ROS. Uh, there are some like uh, tools provided by ROS itself for us to have a quick look of a quick look of what is happening. One of them is RQT graph. Let me just pass on RQT. It shows the, the current graph of the ROS architecture. So let's see what we have right now. Oh. No graph. Is it? Is it? Okay. 
Okay, let's control C. Real time troubleshooting. <laughs> yeah, man, this is the first time like trying like <laughs> This should show like raw score at least. That that will work like a, uh all. But first, um, let me. I have another machine, so let me check. <laughs> Maybe I need to run run something for it to like come up. Okay. So no worries. So right now we have nothing. No node is up. Uh, I don't know why I cannot see like uh, Ross Master, but normally I see that here. But no, none of the other nodes are up right now. Let let me bring up one node and and let's see what that node is doing. So I'm just showing. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just running these right now, but I'll I'll be constructing these projects from scratch in a while. Um, workspace, topic publisher. So I'm bringing up a topic. Let me show you like what this topic does. So did you create the topics for each uh, interface? I mean, if you want to communicate from one node to the yeah. one node, like to create the topic. Mm, many of the topics already. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I I'll communicate. Every, I'll create every node at least. I'll not say I create every topic every time, because many of the topics are already there. It's, it's something like I don't create an integer variable in itself every time, right? But I create a C plus plus like a main program. Right, so I always create a node. I need not to create a topic. It depends if I want a very specific message that is already not present in ROS. I will create the topic too. But I have the capability to create new message. Uh, yeah, I think I confuse your. Uh, so I will definitely create a new topic every time, but I need not to create a new message. Yeah, because of what yeah. I said, when you try to create a topic, I said you need to. Yeah, sure, sure. I think yeah. So I always create a new topic. Like I and I have to name the topic. So, so I think looking at this program, uh, the node name. So this is like there. There's some things that are always there in a ROS program. The first two lines, ROS init, and then ROS node handle finish. So you need to have you need to always have these two lines for your ROS node to get initialized when you will run. Okay, and there are like details to it that even I don't bother. But like, unless you have you you have these two lines, this will not act as a ROS node. So let us look at the first one, ROS in it. What it does is that you have you are actually uh, so okay. So this is a C plus plus program for you for those. Uh -huh. I think so. Plus. Yeah. This is fine, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's try to understand. Like, so this is the main. These two lines are necessary in nature. For ROS, the first one, you pass the arguments pass to the main. Yeah. So this is how, like, in C++, mm -hmm. normally if, uh, we need not to pass these two arguments, but that's how ROS is. So, so think of these three lines as like fixed lines. Every time you'll create a node, just copy and paste these three lines. The final argument, the topic publisher that I have written, you can change this, and this is the name of the node. And you can change like every time, depending upon what that node does, you should name it like okay. Okay, so this is a lidar data processor, so I can name it that. Way. This this particular node is simply publishing something. That's why I have named it topic publisher. Like in your real time, in, in your case, mm -hmm. on this robot side, what would the topic publisher do? Uh, like like here. Yeah. So okay, so this is uh, this is not part of uh, the main robot. Okay. I'll show you these programs. But uh, what I'm trying to do here is I I'm trying to bring up a node that will publish just one two three four 
five, six in a counter, and then I'll bring up another node that will just read this data. Yeah. That's it, right? Just trying to establish like the basic functionalities of those. So once that is there, I'll sh show like how that can be extended to do much more complex stuff. Okay, so these three lines are like this. apart from the third argument that we are applying that tells okay what is the name of the node that that we want and we'll see like how that will affect uh, other things. Then I'm saying that this node is a publisher and it will publish it on like topic name. So 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 far I have like created two variables sort of like so this is the name of the node and this node will publish on the counter. Right? Okay. Once that is established, then I'm saying this will publish at two hertz. And um, this will public, publish at uh, not two hertz, one divided. So this will publish every two seconds. So, yeah, so, and then this topic is associated with an integer variable. So, so we are publishing integer on that topic. So, do you have like, any like question regarding this one? I mean, I think in other uh, language, when you so the two is it two seconds, mm -hmm. uh, but usually, like for example, when you said delay or something, it's usually in milliseconds, right? So I was just yeah. So yeah, hours, this is like uh, so you have like millisecond variables too. This this is I believe this, yeah. This is there are like other uh, so ROS rate can or you can also use like millisecond. Um, as an input, I think you'll have to just modify this object, but like that's just another functionality that you can use. So it's it's not like you do not have a millisecond feature in, in, in here. It's just that you'll have to use slightly different thing. That's it. Okay. So so looking at this program again, I'm naming the, the node. Then I am saying okay, it will publish on this topic, on counter topic. And, and what it will publish? It will publish in details. Yeah. Can there be two or many publishers? Yeah. And then how would you define the rates? Uh, so you can you can define so every one of them is independent, right? So you can have another like like here. So uh, yeah, so you will have to have like a single loop running very fast. Uh, it's it's like a programming a question that he, what he ever asks is like suppose the same function wants to publish at 10 hertz on one topic and like 100 hertz on another topic. How will you achieve that? So what you will do is you will run like a single pass like loop that is running at maybe like 1000 hertz, like even faster than both of like, like uh, at the rate at which you want to publish at the highest rate. And then you will check, okay, this much time have passed. And so let me, sh yeah, I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, so this so this this will look something like this. So suppose suppose this thing is running at like thousand thousand hertz, right? And then what I'll check is uh, if I want to publish at uh, twenty hertz, then I'll I'll have two counters. Counter t one is equal to zero. Okay, so so if something is running at like uh, is running thousand times one second, then how many cycles I should wait for it to run only like twenty times per second? That's, uh, anyone? Like, it's pretty. So so the main uh, so we are running something at like uh, suppose we are running something at like one second. Uh, in one second, I'm running a loop at thousand times, then how how many of those times I should just not do anything for the final output, the final outcome to run at like 20 hertz or 20 times. So by, by 50. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Right. So 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 I'll like I'll have a counter and what I'll do is if T1 plus plus is equal equal to 50. Right? even as equal to zero and do the rest of the process. Right?
right? And that's it. So what you did is, so you can do similar kind of math, like mathematical thing. Like, so this one will run at 20 hertz. Like everything inside this if condition will run at uh, 20 hertz. Similarly, you can have something that you want to run at 30 hertz. You, you just need to select the right numbers there. So you run the main loop at like very high rate, and then you see, okay, uh, 20, like one by 20th of second have passed, so I'll I'll do this. So this, suppose I want to run something at like uh, 40 hertz, then I'll just do 25 here. So it's just, it's just a programming thing, like nothing to do with ROS. But you can publish at different rates from the same code using this, and this logic is very common in, in programming. Okay, so this is something that I don't want in my main program right now. But. And I think if you're uh, publishing at two different rates in the same node, mm -hmm. it's just easier to just run a new node and just do it at a different rate. Because okay. then, because then you have to start a new thread. Because I think if you do a loop rate, uh -huh. I think it's a blocking. I think it blocks everything else before it. it so so yeah. Right? So so loop rate. Uh, what loop rate does is. Uh, yeah, it sleeps for the yeah. rest of the time. So it yeah. doesn't allow anything else to, to execute in this In node. this node, yeah. yeah. That's why you are running your main node at like 1,000 hertz. Yeah. And there is an assumption yeah. there that each node, like if one of those processes is running, like, yeah. okay, then it is not taking at least one by, like more than one by 1,000 of, of a second. Mm -hmm. Because if that will happen, yeah. you'll not be able to run that loop at like 1,000 hertz. Yeah. So there is an assumption that all, like, that all of these, like, so this is running at much, this processing is happening at maybe like even slower than one byte. So this is the time taken by this process. Like, so you need to be very, so each of your, pro, like all the processing that you have are doing should be happening at a rate lower than the rate you are running your main loop, if you want to do this. And yeah, and any time, like, you are not able to meet your timing requirement. That's a big deal. Uh, so if that is happening, either you shorten down the uh, like you shorten down the process timing, like or make it more less complex. If timing requirements are not met, like we at least in autonomous driving, we just stop it, machine. Like simply stop it. It's very critical. Thing. So if suppose my my sensor is supposed to send data to me at 20 hertz, and I'm not getting that, and I'll just stop the machine. I'll not run it. Right? So you need to make sure that all your timing requirements are met. Though ROS provides you the capability to just work with it, and you should try to have nodes that can take care of the delay. That, that was the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. Of ROS, like uh, your program can be agnostic of if you have got the message or not. But uh, like in critical systems, if you haven't got some critical data, you should stop. That's why. Uh, and suppose your processing is taking too much time, then you should make like, and you are claiming that it will run at like thousand hertz. Then there is something wrong with the whole design of the system. Maybe yeah. just stop like in the middle of whatever is yes, going on. Yes, we do. You know, like a watchdog process. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, watchdog is something that does very similar thing, and we do uh, watchdog timer. So we don't use any hardware sort of thing, but we can simply look at the time. Okay, I'm waiting for that. Uh, yeah. I haven't got. But very similar to what watchdog does. Um, right. So you you can do this, but you need to make sure all your all of those individual tasks are taking much less time. That you're meeting at least the thousand words requirement, and that is always met. Okay. okay. So let me just. Okay. So I'm deleting this. Um, okay. So what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll bring up this node up. Okay. So. Let me show you how to bring that up. So I'll do the first thing I'll do is import my ROS library. Okay, and then uh, I'll do I'll go to my workspace. Okay. Uh, so 
this command is importing my like local node that I have created. So the first like import ROS was importing the ROS basic functionalities. But a setup dot bash when I'm like in, when I'm sourcing that from my workspace, it is importing my my like the nodes created by me. And then I'll do the rest. So um, uh, now I'll like explain a couple of commands. These are some of the ROS commands. This is how I'm like launching. Uh, so this will be what's the name of the node? Yeah. So this is a Oh, it's not there. So it's still uh, cross. Yeah. Control L and Not up. Okay. Let me just see. Okay. So this is the command that I ran. Okay, the, so the structure of the command is ROS launch is a ROS command. Then I write the name of the package that I have written. And then I have write the name of the launch file that I have written. So launch file have information regarding okay. So every package can have multiple like nodes. I can write. So I so launch, right? And so then this the first thing that I pass is topic, uh, the package name. And so package name is also defined by me, and then the launch file name is also defined, right? So so let's see, like once I've brought it up, what has happened in the ROS world, right? So I'll do again the RQD thing. Uh, RQD graph and RQD graph. So now we have like single node and yeah so so now this is this is what is happening right so we we have brought up a single node and let's see like what what that node is doing like uh control a rosco no not rosco import ros again like every, in every new terminal i'm doing import ros just with both my ros libraries and then Topic list. Okay. So, so then what I've done is I've, I've called ROS topic command. What it does is it can tell me, okay, what are the topics on which things are getting published. And then I'm, so this is like basic, this is very similar to basic Ubuntu command, command line thing, right? So, ROS topic list. So, it is listing all the topics that we have right now, kind of on. Right, so so counter is the one that I'm publishing to. ROS out statistics and ROS out aggregation. These are something that comes up with the ROS master. So the counter is the one that we need to look at. Let's look at like what counter is publishing. So I can look at so ROS topic. And then I'm doing tab to see okay what, what is happening. Echo. And then so I need not to remember each and everything by heart, but now I'm like just echoing everything on the counter topic. So this is what that topic is publishing. It's just 
Yeah, it is just publishing like incre increasing numbers at some particular rate. So this is what that that node was doing. Uh, that is publishing at what rate now? Right? It's two hertz now. Yeah, two hertz. not two. Yeah, that was yeah. hertz. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So for us. Okay. So uh, one more thing, like so we are using something called a sleep. So um, so there are two ways in which we can introduce delay, like. Uh, like in a normal program, like when we are, when we are doing embedded programming like Arduino, I can directly write like a loop, working loop, and then I can introduce okay ten seconds of delay. I can introduce delay, and and then I'll again do a task. What this sleep does, what this ROS uh, loop read sleep does is suppose suppose there is something that you want to repeat at ten hertz, and then your processing is itself taking three hertz. So if you if you will not if you will implement a simple sleep there and you will put like a 10 second delay, then it will take 10 second delay. But this raw sleep, what it does is it takes care of the time that your process have itself taken. So if your process have taken three seconds of time already, you need not to sleep for 10 seconds. So it will just sleep for the rest seven seconds. So that's, uh, so it actually tries to implement exact rate of so it, if you are saying two hertz, then it tries to loop at that rate instead of like it is not like constant delay. If your process takes more time in one loop, then it will like sleep for less time. It will try to compensate for that time. If your process takes less time, it will sleep for more time. And that's why this you should use raw sleep uh, <laughs> this function rather than using your own sleep. Like even in Arduino, uh, that's a really complex thing to program. If you want to have like a constant delay, and you have some processing happening in between, how will you like? Uh, how can you guarantee that you you will have like a 50 hertz rate? Uh, the way to do that is like have like a very fast clock, and then uh, at the beginning of the process, like just at the beginning of the process, just uh, look at the time, then look at how much time I've already completed at the end of the. Uh, uh, end of the cycle and then sleep for the rest of the time only, not sleep for like a constant time because then you will not be able to get uh, the exact rate of uh, frequency that you want to run your process at. So that's like very subtle, but that's a very important thing. Okay. So okay, so this was a publisher. Uh, let's look at a subscriber, right? So so we'll have a very uh, so we'll just bring a node up, what that node will do, it will listen to the same counters topic. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is the program. Yeah, okay. Yeah, subscriber is, I think, even more simpler. Like, there is no timing requirements because it responds at every message that it gets. Okay. Or like when when this stack gets filled, that is like okay. So so what Ross uh, what subscriber have Ross uh, a subscriber have a callback. So what callbacks are? Uh, so callbacks can be thought of as interrupts. Driven program like uh, so if you have done some like embedded uh, programming. So instead of running every like every some some time, like every second or something, I can have I can say okay, run every time you you receive this message. So this is what callbacks does. So callbacks run only when you receive like a new message of type count, right? So so yeah, that, that's what is happening, and it is a spinning forever. Ross is spin is like a while one, and it will do it forever. Uh, yeah, okay. The name of it. Topic, uh, the name of the node is Topic Subscriber. There the name of the node was Topic Publisher. Let me, yeah, let me show you one more ROS command that is handy. Let we'll see. Uh, ROS node. Can you show the code that is running at two hertz? I'm quite sure, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it, uh, that's. This one? Yeah, what, what, can you show the whole code behind the... Oh, 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 oh. topic publisher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
problem. Right? So this is the this is the code. So okay. The yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Loop rate two. That's where or yeah. That's where that's where it is. Okay. Oh, so what's the one thousand where he said? So that's the out. size of the staff. Oh. Uh, that, uh, so suppose this node is publishing. No one is listening. So what will happen to all the data over there? So uh, so there is a buffer that they maintain like. If there, if uh, you are not able to uh, intake the data that is coming, then it will at least keep some buffer there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, that's for that. Yeah. So just okay. keep keep it large enough, not very large because it will take extra memory. But uh, so that whole thing that we went over with the frequency then, and then like the sampling rate or whatever, or sending out publishing rate. Uh huh. So you can just set it. You don't need that while loop, right? You just set it right there with that loop, the loop underscore rate. So this, so here, like you were talking about this one, loop rate dot. And then remember, you added it, and then you took it out. The whole like thousand hertz divided by fifty. So yep, yep, hertz. yep. So instead of doing all that, you just put twenty in there, right? Oh yeah, but the question over there was that. Suppose a single node want to publish on two different topics at different rates. Um, okay. Right. So that was like a little bit more complex situation. Yeah. If you know exact rate at which you want to publish on a single topic, then yeah, just write that number there. But like, suppose you have another topic at which you on which you want to publish at half the rate, like at one hertz, then I'll all I will do is I'll create like an integer number and I'll just Add one to that number and check. Okay, if that is even every time. Like I'll publish only when it is even every. So I'll publish every second time. So the rate of publish on that topic will be half of the main process. So that that's kind of, that was kind of crazy. Okay. And uh, that's the that's the common pattern that I have seen and seen. Um, but yeah, try to like separate your notes as much as possible. Though, like you should not be doing lot, lot of processing on like a single node. And normally, every node is supposed to be doing some logically separate tasks. That's very important. Like if you are not able, not doing that, then uh, your program will be very complex very soon. Will grow. To, okay. So this is like. So right now we are running. Oh, did we switch on the subscriber or not? No, no, we haven't switched on the subscriber. So let's switch on the subscriber. So the way to go will be I'm in the workspace. I'll be sourcing. This is my and then cross launch. Uh, what was the command here? Oh, this is not required. There was another. Okay. Last one to talk to publisher, so here it will be. Topic subscriber. Then this is Ross launch. I think what is happening is unfortunately. Ah, uh, Ross. Cindy. Tata. So this is just like importing my libraries. Like nothing to do with the main program, but Ross launch and then uh, topic subscriber. What I've done is I've switched off the publisher right now, just to topics subscriber. So Ross is already recommending me. So when I'm doing tab, it is showing me okay what are all the uh, packages present with that T name. So it helps us to do the command completion. So why did you have to turn off the publisher? And I just want to show you something like that's fine. Okay. So so I have switched on the subscriber. But subscriber is not doing it. Like it's not showing anything. Now let me switch on. 
So what? Let's look at what the subscriber was doing. What it is doing is it is calling a callback function and printing the message that the that the publisher is published. So right now no one is publishing. That's why we are not getting any message there. There is that. Uh, there was another one. Oh, here. Yeah. Right now, no one is publishing. That's when you're not getting it. So I'm now switching on the publisher. Let's see what we're doing. So as soon as the publisher started to publish, the subscriber started to call the callback and just the program. If you look at the program, what subscriber is doing, it is simply printing the number, the data. Uh, and uh, just to check if it is working at like two hertz, you can also look at the times associated with it. Like, so at what time? So in one second, like two numbers are getting published. So if you look at again, this is blue. right? Okay. So uh, this ROS info is the ROS command or a ROS info? Uh, in the callback function? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a ROS function, yes. And there are like a different level of severity with which you can publish things. So info is one of them. Then there is error. Then there is like fatal. Depending upon the seriousness of the message, you should Tag it with that one because you can then in the end you can filter out. You do, you need not to print info every time because info is something that is like soup. It's sort of like an exaggerated form of information. So maybe you just want to look at the fatal information. So you'll do like raw raw fatal. So if I do just uh, print a uh, message point of data, uh -huh. so it should just give me number instead of raw info. I yeah, see, see yeah, you can do that, but that's not recommended uh, because you're not getting any timing associated yeah, yeah. with it. Like, but is there something like mess, message pointing to time? Message pointing to time? Because this is uh, that one attribute is data uh -huh. of the message. Uh -huh. uh, is there any attribute like time? Of the same oh no! So that is coming with the info. The, so info ROS info function is providing that. Information. So time is not stored in the message. No, it that's an attribute of the info itself. So, yeah, so if you're in, like the way this is written, like so Ross info does not have like access to the time itself. It's it's kind of brother to it. It's not like child, so it does not have it only has information of the lower level. So it comes with Ross info, but Ross info. Oh, it's like I cannot access it directly here, like ROS info dot something. Okay. So that is like an abstracted thing provided by ROS for, for us. So you, you can actually do C out or printf, like if you're comfortable with that. But like ROS info or ROS debug or ROS error, ROS fatal, these are recommended methods of doing it because you have the timings. These are very important in like when you want to look at things, 10 messages. My robotic arm, like every motor is sending the actual angle, you definitely want to compare them at the right time rather than like if you do not have a reference, okay, when this angle was this angle, then so you definitely need the timing information, and that is very good. That is one of the most important things that ROS provides. And this is not even this is not industry standard. But it's good enough for us, yeah. Okay, so what is the next thing that I can do is oh yeah, I can now show you the the, the whole map of how things are happening. Now what we should see one node that is publisher, one node that is subscriber, and the topic in between, topic name should be counted. Right? So so here. Uh, Ross one RQT graph. Yeah. Right. So I think now we can see like, so we are running two nodes. 
publisher is publishing on counter, subscriber is subscribing from counter. Right? Now, counter is the what? A counter is the name of the counter. And now I can do one more thing. So where is the master in this? Yeah, they, they're not showing master, I, uh, but like that's present there. This is omnipresent in loss. <laughs> okay. So okay, let me. Uh, so in this particular terminal, let me also subscribe to the counter. So now there are two two guys who have subscribed to the counter. So let me just close this and try to replot this. Oh, wait, wait, what did you just do? So there was already a subscriber up. What I did is uh, I I subscribed to the same counter term counter channel using this term loop right here. So I, I can subscribe from the terminal directly to a particular topic. Okay. So so you created another subscriber? Sort of like it created like uh, we should say a name node, not a name, of course, but Ross uh, master creates a random name for that particular topic, and that particular node, and 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 create another subscriber. Essentially, yes, but the name is not an undermining node. But is that the same node? Or is that a different? That's a different node. node yeah. Okay. Every yeah. So I can kill one or another, and you will see like, right? So. So like here, and um, okay, okay. So let me kill one of them. I'm killing this one, okay. And when I'll refresh, this one, right? So I, I, so I hope like how Ross is like helping us in like communicating between nodes. Like so now, how things will be in like a a more complex robotic systems. This will be like a sensor. Maybe uh, an IMU uh, sending you acceleration, uh, acceleration, then guy, uh, rotational velocities. And then suppose you have another sensor, like another node, uh, that is sending you velocities of the motors. Now you, they both will be publishing on their own channels. Then there will be node that will be feeding on both of them. So it will be subscribing to those two channels. It will do the sensor fusion. So I'll call that node sensor fusion node. And then I'll publish the actual state. So that that will be like how, so that is how a subsystem of a bigger a complex robotic system will look like. So, so two sensors sending their own information. Then there is a sensor fusion node doing some sensor fusion. And then we are getting out the uh, few state, and then that can be so. Suppose it is publishing on the channel topic name fuse data. Now I'll have like uh, a, the main brain of this robot that will feed on that data. Suppose I'm making a robotic arm, and I have got the state of all the all the joints. Now I want to take to a final state. Now I'll feed on that data. Okay, what this is the current state, the fuse state. Then my logic, my controller will command according to the mathematical model of that robot. So I, I, I hope like you, you're getting the bigger picture there. What do you guys use at your work? It's called AIS. AIS? Yeah. Alias? AIS. I don't know the full form. It's, is it like by caterpillar or is it like mm -hmm. no no it's yeah it's 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 like uh proprietary yeah because a lot of people have problems with the ross where the overhead is so high it just like it stops publishing data or something like that and that that would be like i don't know it's uh it's actually not happening maybe that uh i mean if you use like ross one yeah there might be Problems with that. Yeah, that's. Uh, then they they're trying to fix it with Ross two. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. a different. Yeah, that's. A, um, but yeah, it's it's, it's not a real time. Thing, yeah, this so. is not. Yeah. This yeah. Is so not. yeah, it's. Yeah. So uh, so Ross two have made a couple of modifications. We get rid of the Ross master. We don't want anyone to be it's a like master. Yeah. 
and then they have also changed the communication protocol. Like there, and that's much more robust yeah. than yeah. Like when we were doing like uh, AV stuff at Ford. They're using uh, Baidu's uh, Apollo, Apollo yeah. thing, and they they actually are not using Rust anymore. So they so so they used to build on top of Rust. Oh, yeah, um, Apollo is built on top of Rust. And then but then they actually said, okay, we're not using Rust anymore. We just built their own. Yeah, because yeah, evolved on a for yeah, for yeah, fun. Yeah, they they yeah they started with Ross, and they changed the communication protocol essentially. That's it. Like the, but they have kept a lot of things very simple. Yeah. Mm. But Baidu is open. Like Apollo is open source, so you can use yeah. Apollo if you want. Yeah. 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 Or would would you describe it as for fun though? Because <laughs> they they can when they keep updating it, I'm like, you know, yeah, you keep having to change like how you uh, interface with it. It's like yeah, and and, and for me it was difficult because their main documentation used to come in Chinese stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. And, from, yeah. So they <laughs> release the documentation in Chinese first, but they have like a couple of people so, sitting in yeah. I think Kelly yeah. who do the transform like translation and <laughs> stuff. So that was like difficult for me. Like, to an extra level, but yeah. when I was working on it, I was working on it, and it was fun. <laughs> yeah, I almost had been to do the path that I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is like the basic. So, what we have done is we have essentially created a very small robot, <laughs> I will say, in which one node is doing some task that it is supposed to do. Publishing on a channel, and uh, yeah, uh, then there is another node, subscriber node, that is utilizing that information and doing its own task. So both of them can have any degree of complexity. So this one can like like instead of just feeding those, getting getting feeded by those numbers and printing them out, can do a lot more than that using those numbers and all. So. Right, so uh, so this is that, and then let me show you like some like how programs on this machine are, are like, so that like we get some real picture of, of how it can so be. Yeah, so this goes down. Oh, I haven't showed you how to create uh, create a package. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll show that in the end. I think. How, Can how you go to that slide real quick where the with the whole flow diagram. Like this one. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do I need break for some time? Yeah, we should like try. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's take like five minutes break and then we can start. If you guys want water, there's plenty of water. Uh, there's a get a cup. And there's a machine. Oh, there I can show it. And the yeah, issue is that one of the issues. They do that on the Docker, right? You guys yeah. have nice stuff. That was the first time I studied Docker. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to learn Docker because of. Oh, uh, yeah. That was good. And then also using it on the Ford internal network with all the security stuff. Uh, uh, so there's like proxy. double layer. Uh, yeah, yeah, proxies. Double layer. <laughs> Prox proxies are like. Yeah. Docker is uh, pretty hard to maintain. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but anyway. So there's a there's a, a, a caterpillar division in like in this area. I thought it was in uh like yeah. Florida. That's where my my whole team sits. Like I I sit oh. here because of like some F1 visa issue. Oh okay okay. So you have to like just keep, like work with them uh, remotely, I guess. Okay. Or I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I work for my yeah. Okay. Everything is here. Yeah, I talk okay. to them very really often, of course. So you, you can't like so you still have stuff where you can do testing here too. You can do some testing here, like have. Stuff. No, nothing like I ever want software. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But like, okay, so you you, you can validate it all like, like on, on the simulation. Software. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you, you you work on path planning, but not like like necessarily like lower level control. Yeah, stuff. not so low level. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So then you don't really have to. Okay. There's separate teams for all that. Okay. And that's also interesting. I think. The what? That's also interesting. I think. We have like I think low level team sits in like two so uh -huh. TPC testing grounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys, I thought you guys, you guys kind of do similar stuff to things that are you would wait until Victor and Manish. Uh, I haven't really do any stuff with you. Oh, really? No. Stop? I, I work on like other DVDs. Are you still at Ford? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just work on other driver systems. Several people have left main mobility, like the higher ups. Really? Yeah, remember um, Michael? I think you met him maybe once. No? So there was a guy who was the head of their software developer. He moved here from Colorado, Boulder, oh, okay. and he had, his own, he had his own company. Oh, okay. But I think there was a multi, like, hundred million dollar company. Oh, wow. And so he then, joined main mobility? First? And then he joined main mobility yeah. only about a year and a half ago, and then he left, like, I guess recently, a couple of months oh, ago, okay. back in Boulder. Oh, okay. Then I, I saw like just some announcements, a couple of the top people left, but oh, okay. I don't know. I wonder how they're going to do it. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just never <remember> <laughs> this, this is live. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't really say anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, you know that, that yeah, the camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's on the website. But all the stuff that I send is public, public knowledge, except the stuff that I'm working on. There. And you just said the description of the list about it. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. So what are we gonna do now? I know you really want to see the video. So what are we gonna do now? <laughs> I'll just show you like the program that's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. like, 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 Space. So you switch to the car now? Or yes, this is on the car. So we're seeing the. So now you can see, like, I'm publishing it to and subscribing on one, one channel with just the like, same effect. And I hear the program, but yeah. Oh, okay. wait. So this is, uh, the, yeah, this is one of the programs. It's kind of running on this machine. And uh, look, looking at, like, okay. Again, the first three lines, they're common in all of these programs, right? So the name of the operation is uh, teleopter2 or something. Like this node is teleopter2. And then uh, as soon as, uh, so you guys can say, why, why do not I have init? So init is there, and there's another command, right? So there is 30, 30. Um, with the constructor for this linear angular parameter. Okay, do you have a message? Yes. It's all good. Oh, yeah. So, what's with all the turtle stuff across? <laughs> yeah, I think. I Okay, instead of goodness. Okay, there's a head of file. Yeah, we're doing this thing. Long down. CPP. Come on. No. So, cat can and enjoy second button source. Okay, and this is. Okay, let's do card message and let me just see where that is. Okay, here. Oh, so so for this one, what I did is I first of all created my own message. Uh, let's see what I want to publish to the motor. I just want to publish 
okay, left motor is speed, right motor is speed. How how I have thought like I, I should do it. I'll publish like an integer 16 variable that will be kind of proportional to the motor speed. Just like uh, that's how I have done it. Like I don't think there's any right or wrong way. Um, I, I don't know, Mr. Perfect, but yeah. So I did not have any like standard message for this. So I just created like a very simple message with two integers, one for the left motor speed and the for the right motor speed. Okay. So this is how, uh, and ROS message helps us in standardizing the messaging protocol. That's why you can write a program in C++ and Python and all of them can publish to the same publisher, can interact with each other. Because you have a basic underlying uh, protocol that ROS converts to, can convert to any other one. Can you repeat that? Oh, yeah. So, so how, how will you interact between programs that are written in ROS, uh, in C++ and Python? Like, uh, it's easier to do that in C++ and C++, of course. I, uh, but if you want to communicate between like very separate sort of things, then you normally have uh, uh, there's this Google protobuf thing, sort of. So yeah, then you normally sure. have to have like communication message uh, standardization method. So ROS have its own method in which instead of writing like, okay, so this N16 is not like written in any language. This is like the ROS specific thing. We can take up that. Right? So, and it, it is converted in whatever language you're writing your program. So, and ROS creates the files associated with it. So it will create a Python program for the same messages. It will create a C++ program for the same messages. And so we are good, right? Okay. So protobuf is one of the ways to do the same thing. And yeah. Okay. So let's. Oh, okay. So where is the program? Where is the program? Yeah. Fine. So what this program is doing, it's... Okay. So what this program is doing, it's doing like three things, essentially. First is it is publishing the velocity to... To where you you saw the turtle simulation in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So the first one is uh, for the turtle. It is publishing the velocity on the channel on which the turtle reads it. Then it is publishing.